you're drawn to that are not of God. Now, I'm going somewhere this morning. Those things that you try to hide from everybody else. We must overcome our weaknesses because the devil uses our weaknesses to destroy us from the inside out. Think about it for a moment. Have you ever felt compelled to do or say something that you knew wasn't of God? Have you ever, have you ever had a urging from the inside to go do something that you said you weren't going to do no more? I know I ain't going to get no horns on that one. But that's what I want to deal with this morning. Because I don't know if you recognize it or not. I, I, I never been to a psychiatrist. But on TV as I watch them. and I, I, The first thing they try to go way back to find what the original problem it was. What the original weakness was in your life. To deal with you in the present time. They had to go back. So many times we as Christians, we, we come and we give our life to Christ, but we don't want to go back and deal with that weakness. So I want you to think about that for a moment. Jesus came to clean us up from the inside. How many times have you went to wash your car and you just washed the outside and left the inside dirty? Huh? When we was little boys, we'd come right out of the back of field, throw a little water on our face, put our clothes on, going on out. Yeah. And then we wonder why everybody's standing off from us. Because of our weaknesses. We thought we were looking good. But we hadn't bathed. And some of us are the same way in Christianity, in our salvation. We look good, but we're stinking. Because of our weaknesses. I want you to pay mind before we get into our subject this morning, before we get into our text on this morning. Matthew 12, 43 and 45 says, When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places. Seeking rest and find none. Then he said, hmm, I will return to my house from whence I came out. And when he is gone, he finds it empty, swept and garnished. Then he goes, then goes he and take it with himself. Seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in the dwelling there. And the last state of the man was is worse than the first state. Even so shall it be unto the wicked, unto this wicked generation. We give our life to Christ. And God comes in and he cleans us up. Sometimes he takes the tastes out of our mouths and he takes the want, those things that we used to do, we don't do anymore, but in our mind, way back in our mind, there are places that we hide stuff. And the devil knows that we are hiding, that we have those things. Anything that you uh, allow yourself to do before you got saved, you are given to. And so the devil knows he got you, he had you there. And so what he does, he waits to that opportune time to get you back into that same state. That's why we have a compelling at some times in our spirit. Maybe I'm the only one that, 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 that have that compelling sometimes with some things that I used to do. It comes to the forefront of my mind and I begin to think, why is that, Why did I want this? Why, why did this come to my mind? Sometimes it's a song. Sometimes it's just going to the restaurant. Sometimes it, it's just a, 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 a moment in time in my life to where I, 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 I'm, I'm losing stuff or, or I've lost loved ones or, 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 or I, I, I can't accomplish that which I wish I could accomplish. The devil comes in and he said, well, you know, you used to take a drink. There's nothing wrong with it. 
Even Jesus may turn water into wine. Sometimes he, he, he creeps in and he, he puts something that is already in your mind. He put it to the forefront of your mind and he entices you with it. He tempts you with it. What the Bible tells us if we resist the devil, he'll flee from us. But it ain't easy. That's why a lot of us stay in trouble all the time. Because we thinking it's going to be easy. Picking up that cross that Christ required of us to follow him daily. We thought it was going to be easy. Because when you pick up that cross, you can't talk the drinking and adultery and all other types of sin with you. You only can talk the cross. And the cross is not easy. So we're dealing with personal weaknesses this morning. Something that we all have. Yours might not be mine, mine might not be yours, but you might want to tell lies. I don't know, I might want to cheat. But we all got it. This condition called sin. The old nature is always prevalent. The old nature it's always trying to creep its way back to where it was in the beginning. So the house is clean because Christ has come into your life. You've been born again and you're happy. You're cheerful. And you're, you're thanking God from where he brought you from to where he's taking you to. And the devil, he's sitting back, he's saying, uh, I'm going to see. I'm going to see if he's going to stay. If the truth be told, without the Holy Spirit, none of us would stay. All of us love fleshless things. All of us was in our carnal mind in this at one point, and some of us are still in our carnal mind in this. We acting in spirit, but we still carnal mind. We can't get with the spiritual things simply because we have some weaknesses in our lives. I'm going to take my time this morning because somebody says it's cool anyway. <laughs> Everyday living is not easy. Our weakness are not something that we can run away from because it would become an underlining problem in our character and in our everyday living. I don't know how many of you may have been diagnosed with high blood pressure. The pressure just didn't go up. You have an underlining problem. Your weakness is you may taking in too much sodium. So it causes you, your blood pressure to go up. You might be stressed out. So it causes your blood, that's your underlying, whatever is the cause of it, it's your underlying problem. So we just can't act like we don't have high blood pressure. We must attend to it. Or you're gonna stroke out. Or you're gonna have a heart attack. So we must attend to it. And so our weakness, personal weakness, is our underlying problem in our spiritual life. So we must attend to that weaknesses. We can't overlook it because it's always going to be prevalent in our lives. Even when we think we abide it, somehow or another it creeps out at certain times and other people can see it. We, we thought we done hide it. We thought we done covered it up. But every now and then you see the white shirt from a bun the suit coat. <laughs> have an underlying problem. And so we have to attend to our personal weaknesses. God ain't going to just fix it for you. You got to give it to him first. Right, right. He's not just going to come in and clean you up, turn you around, set your feet on solid ground. You got to give it to him first. Right, right. You got to acknowledge it first. He's not going to do it all for you. Just remember the children of Israel was in bondage in Egypt and he promised them the promised land. But they had to go and obtain it first. We are promised the right to eternal life but we
we got to go and get it first. We got to allow God to come into our spirit. We got to allow his Holy Spirit to permeate our life. We got to have under the blood of Jesus. We got to make sure that we're listening to the Holy Spirit every moment of our lives in order to overcome our personal weaknesses. So Romans 10. Romans 10 tells us Paul had been talking about the law and he picks it up in Romans 10 in the first verse. He says, my brother, brethren, my heart desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal for God, of God, but not according to knowledge. For being ignorant of God, righteousness, and going about establishing their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves to the righteousness of God. Israel. Israel was God's chosen people. The Jews was God's chosen people. And they went about trying to keep the law, the law of Moses. And they went about to, to, to convert the law of Moses to their own understanding and forgot about the law that God had. The law that Jesus was teaching was the law that they were supposed to live by, but they rejected them and went about establishing their own laws. I just wonder how many of us is establishing our own laws and our own weaknesses, and we're being blinded just like the children of Israel. Jesus died for the world, but the world has to accept him in order to be saved. There are some things in my life that I just like doing. Does anybody else like doing some things? Huh? This is not a trick, trick question. <laughs> anybody else out there like just doing some things that you, you know, some things that you know that ain't quite good for you, but you like doing it anyway? I didn't say you will do it. I didn't say you still doing it, but I said you like doing it. We got to examine ourselves right. and establish our righteousness with the righteousness of God right. and not in our own perceptions and how we feel about it or how we think about it for right now. So, have not submitted themselves. So submission is one of the things and requirements that we have to do in order to, to follow Christ all the days of our lives. We have to keep submitting ourselves under the authority of Christ because if we submit ourselves, he will continue through the Holy Spirit to tell us what we need to let loose and let go. Those things that are destroying us, those things that the enemy are trying to destroy us with, he will allow us to, to let it go. And he will open up a door that when you walk through it, that it cannot be there anymore. Don't mean that the devil is not going to try to tempt you, tempt you anymore. But your heart desire won't be that thing anymore. That's right, preacher. That's right. So, in the book of Judges, and we have preached this before, about the last judge of Israel was Samuel, was the strong man, Samson. Samson had. A personal weakness. He loved women. I ain't gonna ask you, man. No question. Your personal weakness may be something else, and you women might have personal weaknesses of your own. But we all have them. Samuel, uh, Samson was the strongest man that ever lived. His strength. He was a Nazarite from birth, and his strength lie in him keeping his oath as a Nazarite. Psalm said it was his hair. That's what the source of his power was. But I want you to understand that he did not keep his oath that he made. And so for that weakness that he had with Delilah, Delilah saw that, knew he was weak for her. 
somebody he wasn't even supposed to be with anyway. I ain't going to ask no questions. Delilah kept picking at him and picking at him till she found the source of his power. And she tricked him and bound him up and cut his hair. And he became weak. That's Judges 16, 15, and 16. He became weak because he would not keep his oath. We got to stay with the Lord. And once he became weak and he found himself being used as a slave to press the weak, and they brought him to a temple, and they, he, he asked the question, can I sit, stand here and rest for a little while? And as they laughed and they joked about the strong man that had, had did many exports, uh, the one that was, anointed, that was anointed of God, he had his weaknesses, just as we preached last week about David, he had his weaknesses. Adam and Eve had their weaknesses. And we too have our weaknesses. But the key point here is when he began to talk to the God, as he began to pray, God answered his prayer and gave him enough strength that he could conquer his enemies. And God will give you enough strength if you will submit yourself and acknowledge where you are and acknowledge where your weaknesses are and give them to Christ. He will give you enough strength to conquer your enemy. Yeah. But you got to recognize it. You got to recognize your personal weaknesses. Yeah, yeah. Philippians 4 and 13, Paul tells them, I can do all things which through Christ that strengthens me. And so, if we can recognize that we can do all things when those trying times, when those tempting times come to overtake us, Whatever that weakness was, there are times in our lives to where it becomes prevalent in our mind. There are scenes in our lives to where you want to walk backwards instead of walking forward in the spirit realm. And it seems like the right thing to do because ain't nobody. Sometimes it, it don't even matter whether somebody's looking or not. There are times in each one of our lives that we get that way. And when we can sneak around the back door, we will. That's why God gave us the Holy Spirit to keep us. He chastises whom he loves. That's why it bothers you so much. After you done done what you done, Satan do just like he did in the Garden of Eden. He gets somewhere and he gets quiet. Just like Samson, after he had done lay with Delilah and fell asleep, and they came in and got him. She got somewhere and got quiet. Just like King David. I mean, he don't lay with the sheep and the prophet came and told him what God had sent him to do. The, 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 the devil, he just, the one that led him through his weakness, got somewhere and got quiet. And now here it is, you got to deal with your father. You got to deal with God because he loves you, so he chastises you. So when he chastises you, sometimes he takes things from your life. Sometimes he allows things, your health to go down. Sometimes he allows your finances to get messed up simply because he wants you to submit. Submit to his will and to his way. And deal, and let him deal with that personal weakness because if the truth be told, he had already come brought you up out of that personal weakness. It is you that is walking backwards in that personal weakness. The house was empty. Now there's seven more demons in there. And they ain't come to, to just look at you. They come to party. They come to have a good time. They come to destroy those things that you used to have. Why? Because the master done clean the house up. They got plenty of room to walk around in there, in that noggin now, in that head, in that mindset now. And they'll tell you things. I don't know about y'all, but every now and then when they come back to the house and they see me, they say, ain't nothing wrong with that. You know the word said, a uh, little wine for the stomach's sake. 
know the, the word said, you know, you can ask the Lord to forgive you this time. Go ahead on and do it this time. Not knowing that, that you may lose your life this time. Not knowing that it may cause you to stroke out this time. Personal weaknesses. It's what we struggle with every day of our lives. And we must struggle. If you ain't struggling, that means you don't gave in to it. You must struggle with it. I don't care if you do have to drag that leg, drag it on forward towards God. I don't care if you did walk backwards the other day, walk forward towards, the, towards God today. Struggle. Fight for your right to eternal life because Jesus already gave it to you. Personal struggle. Why do we have to struggle? Because somebody is watching you. Somebody is following Reverend White. Somebody is following Pastor White. Pastor White can't have but one wife. Because if I have two wives, some other preacher might say, well, mm, if a pastor got two, I can have three. They get no amens on that. If I'm all at the ABC store every day of my life, and I'm drunk all the time, then somebody else Maybe one of my members said, well, Pastor White was drunk the other day. He passed out in the call of church ground. Then it must be all right because Pastor White done it. This is why we must be a light unto a dying world. So we got to deal with our personal issues because whether you're sneaking or hiding or not, somebody sees you. The devil will make it so to kill your reputation. To kill your testimony. Yeah. He will make it so. Yes, he will. So you have to deal with that personal weakness. I know this ain't a subject y'all want to talk about. I know this ain't a subject to make you jump and shout. But we got if we trying to make it to heaven, we got some help. And if we got some help, then we need to hold on to that help and pull up. We're gonna skip on to the ninth verse. This is the good part. I bet many of you have read this uh, many a times, and, and, and you're thinking it's a path, and it is, it's a pathway to salvation, but it's a pathway to something else. It's a pathway to, to dealing with your personal issue that you might have overlooked. The ninth verse says that, if thou shall confess with thy mouth, Lord, I'm a drunk. I'm not talking about AA confessing. I'm talking about talking to the Lord. So, Lord, I'm a drunkard, so I can't take a little sip for my stomach's sake because if I take a little sip, I'm going to want to take another drink. Because when I used to drink, I used to drink to get drunk, not to take a sip, not to be social. So I can't take a sip. I'm using this simply because I want you to understand all of us used to be sinners and we're saved by grace. And so we can't take a sip of sin. <laughs> we can't just do a little bit today and think we're going to repent of it and get away with it tomorrow because we're going to become drunk on the things of life. We're going to become drunk to our personal weaknesses and ain't going to want to give it up. And then after a while, our personal weakness begin to overtake us in our lives, in our everyday walk. It begins to overshower us. And we don't want to come back to church no more. We don't want to pray no more. We don't want to sing in the choir no more. Simply because we don't took a drink of sin. Our personal weaknesses. Whatever it is. You know what it is. And it's more than one weakness, too. So I don't need to put one in the forefront. Just say, here I am, Lord. <laughs> Fix me, Lord. I'm all broke up, Lord. I had to say that every day. I'm all broke up, Lord. Come on in, Lord. Fix me. I don't know why I am the way I am. I'm just a man. Sharp and shaping in the sin. Undone. So, don't take a drink of sin. Here's your help right here. Paul is telling the Romans church, 
Here's the help. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. So I said, Jesus is Lord of my life. And if Jesus is Lord of my life, then I'm picking up my cross and I'm following him daily. And if I follow him daily, then I'm laying a weight of sin um, to the side every day of my life. That I'm not the same way I used to be on yesterday. I'm not the same way I used to be 20 years ago. I'm not doing the same stuff that I used to do because Jesus is the Lord of my life. I can proudly say that. Can you? Jesus is the Lord of my life. I might be walking raggedly. I might got a little hump in my walk. But Jesus is the Lord of my life. And I'm giving it to him every day of my life. Those things that I struggle with, God is coming in and fixing it for me. Those things that I thought about doing that I did not do, or those things that I thought about doing that I thought I did do, God is fixing it for me because Jesus is the Lord of my life. And you have to pronounce that to yourself every day. It's no good to pronounce it to me, but pronounce it to yourself that Jesus is the Lord of my life. When I think about taking a drink of sin, I said, Jesus is the Lord of my life. I don't need this drink. I'm going to go get a drink of righteousness now. I'm going to go get a drink of salvation now. Because Jesus is the Lord of my life. And thou shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. Saved from what? From hell, damnation, and from your personal weaknesses. This is not just talking about uh, your salvation alone is talking about everything that exists in your life that is against God's word. God can save you if you just with, if you just acknowledge that Jesus is the Lord of your life and you believe in your heart that God has risen him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved, yeah. saved from everything, not just eternal fire, but saved from your own self. We almost finished. The 10th verse says, For thou, for with the heart man believing unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture said, Whosoever believed on him shall not be ashamed. So you don't have to walk around with your head down because you did something on yesterday. You had a personal weakness on yesterday because yesterday is gone. Yesterday is a memory. Today is what, what matters. In the present time is what matters. Are you going to deal with that personal weakness? Or are you going to continue to walk with that personal weakness in your future days? I say no. Twelfth verse says, For there is no difference between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So it don't matter whether you're black or white, don't matter whether you're Democrat or Republican, God save all. Amen. Amen. Don't matter whether you're Hindu or Greek, don't matter whether you're Mexican or Latino or, or whatever your nationality is, God save all. Don't matter whether you was a murderer or adulterer or liar or a cheater or a drunkard, it don't matter. God saves all. And if you save all, then you can give that personal weakness that you have to him. Don't sit back and say, I've been doing this for years. There ain't no need for me to stop now. That's a trick. That's a trick of the enemy. God has made it possible that you can walk up out of whatever personal weakness that you have. You can walk up out of that personal weakness. And you don't have to look back. Now the devil gonna tempt you, continue to tempt you, but you don't have to look back in that personal weakness and find loss. You can't overcome your personal weakness. Don't let any, don't let the enemy or nobody tell you that it's all right to live beneath your calling. The Holy Spirit is able to bring you and keep you and clean you into the coming of our Lord Jesus the Christ. We must call on the name of the Lord and our Savior the Christ. But from our own self, 
things that people don't even know about me, I think about. Things I used to do, I think about. And the enemy cloud my mind sometimes. The enemy set certain situations up that I could go back into what I was, the trap that I was in. Why? Because he's trying to kill me. And he's trying to kill you. He don't want you to make it to the promised land. He wants you to stop in the wilderness. He wants you to stop in the Red Sea. He wants you to stop just before your blessing. He wants you to feel but be where God has called you to be. We are his son. And we have his spirit. If we are called of God, we have his spirit on the inside of us. And if we have his spirit on the inside of us, we have power over the enemy. Right. We have power yeah. over this life. Yeah. We have power over our desire. Yeah. We have power over our finances. Yeah. Not because of our power, but because of God's power. Yeah. Because of his might. Personal weaknesses. your personal weaknesses. You don't have to run and tell nobody about it. Just give an account where you are under the sound of my voice. Give an account of your personal weaknesses. You know what they are and ask God to help you up out of that personal weaknesses. Grab hold to the power that God has put on the inside of you. The devil don't have no power over you. It's a mindset that you have. I was riding around in my car one day and I was thinking about some things that was wrong and God said, go home. And I rode around a little bit more wild and the earth seemed to get worse and worse. So God said, go home. And then when I got home, the earth left. Go home. Go home to Jesus. Go home in your personal weakness. Go on your knees and talk to the Lord about it. Pray about it. You're not just going to get it up off of you. The, the, re the reason why you don't have no, no power in your life over the enemy, either you don't belong to God or you're not fasting and praying like you're supposed to. If the demons are standing and looking at the empty house, I hope you catch, catch this. If the demons are standing and looking at the clean, empty house and they come back in and ravage your life, that means the Holy Spirit ain't there. God's Holy Spirit is in your house. It has power to compel, to repel the enemy from coming even into your door. When they look in there, all they see is the glory of God on the inside of the house. They said, we better wait till it get dark. Oh, he can try to go in. And the darkness is your personal weaknesses. That's what allow the enemy to come into your life. Those personal weaknesses what allow the enemy to attach itself to you. That's why we have to deal with it. We have a lifetime of dealing with those personal issues. I'm, I'm not out here just preaching for the money. I'm not out here just preaching because the church has gotten me to be their pastor. I'm out here preaching for souls. I'm out here to, trying to tell you. That's why I get attacked all the time. I'm going to get attacked. I know as soon as I leave from up here. It happens every Sunday because I want you to deal with your personal self. I'm not giving you a sermon you can shout about later on. I'm giving you a sermon that you can look back on and say, I'm going to change this right here. And the devil don't like it. He don't like it when you change. He rejoiced over your loss. He rejoiced over your being bonded. He rejoiced us over it. So I'm here to, to, for you to fix your personal weakness. I'm going to call for my one of my deacons, Deacon Lester. Deacon Lester, will you come? 
As he's coming, we're going to ask Sister Tim Lake if she would to give us a song. Tell somebody I can't help myself. I'm just blessed. 